Okay, I'm planning to do a day four review, and this is number one, where it says that you have to factor the following polynomial. The common factor is x, and you have x squared plus 5. So that's how you would write number one in factored form. Number two, we have x to the third power plus x squared minus 6x. Once again, you would factor an x. You're left with x squared plus x minus 6. Now, you can still factor x squared plus x minus 6 by finding the factors of negative 6. So the factors of negative 6 are positive 3 and negative 2. So what you're going to do first is you're going to factor the greatest common factor. In this case, it's x. So you're left with x, 6x x squared minus 7x minus 3. And now we're going to go ahead and factor by factor 6x x squared minus 7x minus 3 by multiplying 6 times negative 3 which gives you negative 18 and we have to find the factors of negative 18 in this case it's negative 9 and 2 that we're interested in because negative 9 plus 2 give you negative 7 so to factor this we're gonna have 6x minus 9 and we're gonna have 6x plus 2 and each of these factors you're gonna you're gonna figure out what is the extraneous factor so in this case, we're going to factor a 3, so we're left with 2x minus 3. And here we have 6x plus 2, so we're going to factor the 2, and this is extraneous. So we have 3. We have 3x plus 1. So what is it in factored form? x times 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 2 and write the polynomial function in standard form with the given zeros. So we have x minus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. What I did is you have to move the 3 to the left side, so it's x minus 3. You move the 2 to the left side, it's x minus 2. And you move the negative 1 to the left, it's going to be x plus 1. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and apply the distributive property so x times x is x squared, x times negative 2 is negative 2x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Remember that I'm still multiplying x plus 1, so I have x squared minus 5x plus 6 times x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply x times x squared, which gives you x to the third power. x times negative 5 gives you negative 5x squared. x times 6 gives you 6x. 1 times x squared gives you x squared, and you notice that I'm writing it vertically. 1 times negative 5 gives you negative 5x. 1 times 6 gives you 6, and then what you're going to do is just you're just going to add combine like terms. So it's x to the third power minus 4x squared plus 1x or just x plus 6. So we're going to make this into x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. How did I do that? You see the 1, the 1's going to go to the left. So that's x minus 1. The 1 is on the right, so it goes to the left. So it's x minus 1. And the last one is x minus 2. We're going to go ahead and multiply x times x. FOIL method, x times negative 1 is negative x. Negative 1 times x gives you negative x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And we're still multiplying times x minus 2. So you have x squared minus 2x plus 1 times x minus 2. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply x times x squared, which gives you x to the third power. x times negative 2x gives you negative 2x squared. And then x times 1 gives you plus 1x. 
Then you're going to multiply negative 2 times x squared. Gives you negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2x gives you positive 4x. And then negative 2 times 1 gives you negative 2. I wrote it vertically so you can do this quickly. So you have x to the third power minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 2. I'm going to write it in I'm going to write this in factored form so you have x plus 2 x plus 2 oh sorry that's x plus 1 x minus 1 so I'm going to multiply x times x which gives you x squared x times 1 gives you x 2 times x gives you 2x and then 2 times 1 gives you 2 you multiply that times x minus 1 so what you have here is x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. So you're going to multiply x times x, which gives you x cubed. x times 3x gives you 3x squared. x times 2 gives you 2x. Negative 1 times 3x gives you negative... Oh, negative, negative 1 times x squared gives you negative x squared. Negative 1 times 3x gives you negative 3x. Negative 1 times 2 gives you minus 2. Combine like terms, you have x to the third power. Uh, this is plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. So we have x cubed. 3x squared minus x squared gives you 2x squared minus x minus 2. To find the zeros, all you have to do is set each of them equal to zero. And then just solve for x. So in this case, you add 2 to both sides. So you get x equal 2. And this one, you subtract 4 from both sides. So you get x equal negative 4. So this is a multiplicity of 1. And this is a multiplicity of 1. So what you do to each factor, you set it equal to zero, solve for x, and that's what that and those are going to be multiplicity of one. So once again for number eight, you have to find the zeros and then state the multiplicity. So you have x minus seven equals zero, x minus three equals zero. We're going to solve for x. So you add seven to both sides. So this is a multiplicity of one. We're going to add 3 to both sides, and this is a multiplicity of 1. So both situations, you have x minus 7 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0. This is in factored form. Solve for x. So the first 0 is x equals 0, so x equals 7, and the next one is x equals 3. And that's a multiplicity of 1. So once again, to find the zeros, you have x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 8 equals 0, x minus 9 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, so x equals 1. You add 8 to both sides, so you have x equal 8. And then you add 9 to both sides, and you have x equal 9. So each of these only occurs once. So all of them are going to be a multiplicity of 1. And these are the zeros. For number 9, it says to find all the zeros. So what I would do is I would list all the possible zeros. 6, 3, 2, 1, and remember all of them could be positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 3, positive negative 6. So why don't we try a negative 3? So we have 1, 2, 3, 6, 1, negative 3, negative 1, 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Of course, that's not going to be it. Okay, 
So let's try negative 2. So it's 1, 2, 3, and 6. Bring down the 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, 3. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So yeah, our first answer is x equals negative 2. And remember the fundamental theorem of algebra? Remember the fundamental theorem of algebra? This is going to tell you the amount of zeros. So the first zero is x equal negative 2. And we have a new polynomial since we, we factored it down. So what do we have? We have x squared plus 3 equals 0. So this is an easy way to, easy method to solve this. We subtract 3 from both sides. So you have x squared equals negative 3. You get the square root of both sides. So we know that x is equal to plus or minus i, since we have a negative square root, negative 1, as a, a square root of a negative 1, and then square root of 3. So what are the, uh, what are the solutions? Negative 2, i, square root of 3, and negative square root of 3. For number 10, we're going to once again find or list the possible roots. So it's plus or minus 12, because 12 divided by 1 is 12, plus or minus uh, 6, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. Um, let's try, let's try 3. So we have 1, negative 3, 4, negative 12. And I'm using the coefficients of the polynomial. 1, 3 times negative 3, 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. And I just guess. So we know that the first answer is x equal 3. So since we factored it down, we have x squared plus 4 equals 0. So let's go ahead and solve that over here on the side. So we have x squared plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4 from both sides. So we have x squared equals negative 4. You get the square root. And you notice that you're getting the square root of a negative 4. And you can get the square root of 4, but not the square root of negative 1. So it's plus or minus 2i. So what are your zeros? 3 plus 2i and negative 2i. I went ahead and graphed this, and I did find four root, uh, three roots. I can't find the fourth root, but uh, just so you know, uh, we have x equal negative 1 is one, one of the zeros, x equal negative 0.232, and x equal negative 1.43. The fourth root is going to be imaginary, uh, but I haven't been able to solve it. So if I can't do it, I don't expect you to do it. So I did it graphically. I noticed where the intersections were. So they were at x equal negative 1, x equal negative 0.232, and x equal negative 1.43. So I did it graphically.